Hello beautiful people, it's Celia Musuning Zanyele here. Welcome to this YouTube channel. If you are coming across this YouTube channel for the first time, welcome. Please stay till the end of the video. If you are a return sabi, you do know how much you are appreciated for your time, data and all the opportunities that you're taking to watch my videos among the many other videos thank you uh, somebody did ask me to make a video about sorry let me do this somebody uh, asked me to make a video about um marriages types of marriages the icop and the ocop uh, because um, in one of the videos I did express that marrying in community of property is definitely one of the things that I feel is a mistake to do at this particular time in life that you are living in. Um, now people I think many people do not understand why would I say such a thing uh, because for couples that start a life from the beginning usually many people go for in community of property when they marry because somehow they love each other and because they feel like uh, they do not have much to lose because usually when you are marrying as young couples you don't have much on each side you are both starting a life therefore you feel like it's the honorable thing and then um, just a common sense to marry in community of property and now somebody did ask that I, I should elaborate on why do I say it's a bad idea to marry in community of property so in this particular video, this is what I'm going to try and achieve uh, to explain what is ICOP and OCOP. In community of property and out of community of property. I am not an expert and by no means do I say what I'm going to say here is gospel uh, and it's the best thing to do for everybody i'm not saying uh, it's a blanket approach that everybody should do but this is what i highly recommend now before um we go any further let's try and differentiate what is in community of property icop or cop which is either in community of property or community of property. Both of them mean the same thing. Uh, it's a kind of marriage in which you both share the things equally. You own things jointly. Whatever you have gets to be what we call a joint estate. If you choose that kind of marriage, you are choosing to co-own everything you have including the things that you came with into that marriage in that marriage including everything that you have whether it's teaspoons whether it's anything that you can think of you are owning it jointly now when do you get into ICOP uh, there are two ways to get into ICOP uh, one of the ways is by customary law or customary marriage. Customary marriage uh, is causing a COP. It's an automatic COP. What is customary marriage? Customary marriage is that marriage where everything was done traditionally and there was no going to a home affairs to sign. And um, even if you can go to home affairs to sign, these days you have an option to say, I am marrying this person, this partner, 
uh, under a marriage called customary marriage which is giving us an option of taking second wife third wife or whatever other partners so customary marriage is is allowing for other partners to come into that marriage as well and it also uh, causes automatic uh, joint estate in community of property everything that you own in there it's shared between the two of you in the event of death the surviving spouse uh, gets to own all the things that was owned by the other partner or gets to share the things with the children of that partner and or if it's customary marriage ne? if there were two partners like maybe there were no not two partners two wives in the event where it was a polygamous marriage the wives that are in that marriage get to share everything equally so that is um in community of property and then you can also choose to marry civil what we call civil marriage these days when you go to home affairs and you want to marry the person you can decide the kind of marriage you are getting into you can choose to get into customary marriage and sign as such or you can get into civil marriage now civil marriage it is that one where you are going to be exclusive you cannot marry the other partner under civil marriage um, if a person gets to let's say a man feels like they are polygamous they want to take another partner they must get your permission as the other uh, spouse in civil marriage to marry the other person and you must first go together to divorce under civil marriage and marry under customary marriage before you can get to allow the other person to be part of your union uh, in customary marriage as a polygamous marriage fine now under civil law marriage or civil marriage ne? there are three options there are three options that you can marry you can choose to marry in community of property which is where you share everything that you brought and the ones that you're going to accumulate in marriage that is what we call in community of property there's also um out of community of property with accrual out of com uh, community of property with accrual means you get into marriage but the things you brought are registered as such like i have brought my car i've brought in my 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 house my everything we are only going to share the things that you're going to accumulate that is accrual the things that we are going to accumulate in that marriage those are things that we are going to co-own jointly everything that we've brought in before is not gonna be counted in whereas there is a third option where a uh, i don't know oh it's without accrual so you sign prenup and uh, in that prenup you also indicate that um you don't co-own anything that is without accrual so in that marriage uh, nobody is going to share anything with anybody whatever you are buying is your is your own whatever you buy is your own if you want it to be the, the the spouses in the event of your death you have to write a will to say in the event of my death i wish this be given to my spouse and that be given to my spouse this be given to my mom this be given to my children this be given to whoever so yes let's recap 
Uh, there are two forms of marriages, customary marriage and civil marriage. Customary marriage is automatic in community of property. If you do not want that before the, the things that are done for customary marriages are done, you've got to go and sign the prenup before. You have that option to say, okay, we're going to marry um, uh, in customary marriage, but you're going to sign a prenup and everything that I've brought in, here they are. They are mine. These are yours. We're going to look at accrual, the things that you're going to share in that customary marriage. Oh, no. You're gonna have that contract has have to be signed and it has to be in before you even get into the processes of customary marriage. And then uh, with civil law or with civil marriage, you have three options: you can marry uh, in community of property, out of community of property without accrual. Uh, out of community of property with a crew. So I think I have summarized um, the types of marriages. Now, why did why do I suggest that people do not get into in community of property? Uh, reasons that are coming from my experience are when you in the event of. Um, in the event of death, that is good because you do know that you are covered. You've got nothing to fight with anyone. You are covered in committee of property. In the event of your of the death of your of your spouse, but in the event of things like breakups, maybe you are separating, uh, and in that period of separation, even before divorce. Whatever the other person is doing, you are still held accountable for everything that happens whilst you are still married to that person. Or, uh, from what I heard, you can go and register the separation as well. I don't know the processes thereof. I think um, an attorney can be in a better position to say how best can you uh, alert the um, the law that you are separated from that person so that should they go and make a take a big loan or take whatever uh, while you are still in separation because you do know that in separation most of the time that is the process where there is less talking there is uh, no civil communication that's happening there's a lot in jail that is happening and usually in that period that is where people are angry that is where people are doing stupid things that is where people are revenging that is a process where there is like fresh wounds that are coming from whatever that has caused that split and during that process everybody is dealing with that process in their own way that may harm the other somebody just can take um the 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 healthy credit card that was there that was meant for big things or should the event of unforeseen event happens it was just like staying there on guard but it had good credit they can choose to take it and go on a spending spree as a way of revenge or as a way of coping with pain uh, as a way of coping with whatever that was happening at that time so um man that is messy it's very very messy uh income to property has caused so so many deaths because once you get into that marriage then you accumulate a lot of things and a person maybe gets to that point where they feel like they do not want to anymore but they don't want to share anything with you as well that is where many people have planned to kill their partners uh, ICOP is 
is bad in so many ways like in the event where you are separated during the process of divorce uh, you cannot your, your life is held up actually there is no anything that you can do alone because you are married with that person in committee of property their signature is needed for any decision making thing that you need to do uh, your life is held up you can buy a car on your on your own on your own name uh, you end up being forced if there is you do have a lump sum you end up being forced to buy things in other people's names because whatever you buy during that period of time is still the two of yours so it's yours not yours alone it's yours and your spouse's so like your your life gets held up and depending on how long that divorce process takes your life will be stuck for that long and you also accumulate debts or the debts that you have accumulated or the debts that were accumulated by one spouse are shared at the event of your uh, d divorce you get to share everything including the debts unless you are married to a person that is civil enough to say you know what ah, the car i know it was my debt it's fine i'll carry on from here and that happens but very rare in rare cases it does happen that people get to have um, a civil breakup a civil divorce where they talk that okay you can take this i'll take that you can take this i'll take that you can take this and i'll take that keep your debts i'll keep my debts and take your pension i'll take my pension it does happen in some cases but in very bad cases like myself it was bad to a point where it had to involve what we call liquidators now with liquidators it's it, it's adding another dimension of um problems another dimension uh, uh, another dimension of dimension of com complexity <sighs> it gets worse guys with liquidators that is another layer of complexity because um the liquidators let me tell you what they do they look at the two of you they check how good the two of you are with each other how bad the two of you are with each other if the two of you are not at good terms and you are at loggerheads still they take a chance because they actually they're supposed to have the two of you sitting down on a round table deciding what do you want what do you want what do you want what do you want then this is how we share um if you find a liquidator like mine did not do that actually he he, he did not prefer a round table he preferred to play us against each other because he capitalized on the fact that we are not on good terms so he would go on his side and says i said this 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 he would come to my side and says he said this 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 and to a point where he said i got how uh, the all the money for the house on his side uh, on his side he said i got all the money of the house on my side he said he qualifies to get all the money of the house because he was paying the house while I was living in it. And then I only get to find out when he, when the father of the children is talking to the children, he's surprised, why are we renting? Because I got the money from the house, so I should have taken that money from the house to buy another house for the children. Now he is surprised, why am I not doing that? And then now I only then find out that, oh, okay, he didn't know. But I am told that he qualified for a very big part of the house, uh, of the proceeds of the house, because he was paying while I was living. He even said I was enjoying to stay in that house for six years because our, our um, uh, divorce took 
six years to process it was finalized only after six years after i have given up on each and every fight i had given up on everything that i was entitled for i had given up even on my attorney because i could not afford an attorney anymore and he had an attorney and i was robbed and then one other thing that you must make yourself a favor is do not get into the divorce court without an attorney baby it's a wrong wrong move don't ever get into that court without an attorney never don't you rather go for a legal aid attorneys you rather that was the biggest mistake i did and i paid for it because if i had my attorney even the liquidators were not going to be appointed because my lawyer would have fought for that in the divorce court i could have gotten out of the, the divorce court knowing exactly what i am qualified to get and he would have also gotten out of the divorce court knowing exactly what he qualified to get but because of that i did not have an attorney he had an attorney my attorney had to be the prosecutor and in there the prosecutor these prosecutors do not care about anybody guys let me tell you something they just don't care and then the magistrate and the magistrate was asking me repeatedly ma'am ma do you understand do you understand what you, what you have signed up for and i said yes and there i thought uh, i had signed up for a uh, half of his pension uh we share him pension he's gonna share mine i'm also gonna share his little did i know that there is no such a thing that's what his lawyer told me guys never trust a an attorney of your spouse don't ever they are not there for you they are there for your spouse so it's fine um i got i got ahead at some times most of the time actually after that um i felt angry at myself the choices i made why did i not why did i not until i decided that you know what it took me six years to get that because while i had my attorney this case was not going anywhere the thing that i was saying last time that when you have attorneys be careful they tend to stretch cases because they want to make the most out of it they tend to stretch it may not be the both of them at the same time but it may be one that wants to stretch and if one wants a postponement the other cannot force with ways through so it was a postponement and a postponement and a postponement for six years six damn years i was tired i was tired I was in debt i was penniless i did not have any more money i said to my attorney it's fine i'll go alone because each time we uh, we were going there uh, for an appearance he was billing me per hour and sometimes you're taking three four five six seven hours at times you may have arrived there at eight but your case is only gonna be had after lunch he has to be there or she has to be there for the whole day. You are going to pay. You are going to pay per hour. And so at some point I felt like ah, it's fine. And then this thing that we like to say. Ah, God will be my attorney. God, will... There's no God that's going to be an attorney in the court guys. Let's be truthful. Let's, let's face the truth. There's no Jesus that gets with you into the court. I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry to say that to the believers guys there i thought they were there they were not there and then i found myself uh, having tangled myself in debt having tangled myself in a situation that got me to a point where i had to sell my house mm -hmm, and not get his share of the pension and he, my share of the pension was little. He did not even care about it. Yes. 
so um i hope i have explained uh the matter of icop and the uh, cop uh, so my experience personally is that uh, it's not a bad it's not a good idea to marry in community of property would i marry again yes i would icop nope never not even if you pay me not even if you're a millionaire i'm sorry if you're a millionaire you love me enough you will ensure that i do get something in the event of your death if you really does do love me that much i am not getting into icop with anybody for any reason i'm sorry i hope i'm making sense and thank you for watching this far thank you so much bye bye